Today, we're being positive. Yep, we're talking about 12 houseplants that even a novice would find hard to kill. The long-suffering viewers of this channel will know all about my penchant for whinging and whining about my plants behaving badly, but not today. Nope. Today, I'm being Mr. Positive. I've been told by my doctor that I need to lower my blood pressure, you see. So why am I making this list then? So that you can go to your local garden centre worry-free and pick up a plant or two that won't die within a couple of months. That's the idea anyway. Don't come after me if you do manage to kill them though. I can only take a horse to water. I can't make the bleeding thing drink. Plant number one then. This one might surprise you judging by the comments I get in my videos because I see a lot of people struggling with this family of plant but this particular one is easily the most forgiving. Yes, I'm talking about peperomias and in particular the peperomia obtusifolia. Don't roll your eyes just yet, hear me out. You've probably bought a watermelon peperomia in the past, watched it inexplicably die an excruciating death and vowed never to burden yourself with another peperomia ever again. I hear ya, I hear ya. I'm not that keen on that plant either, but trust me, the obtusifolia is much more well behaved. I mean, you can do anything to her and she won't bat an eyelid. Forget to water her and she doesn't care. Water her too much and she's still not that bothered. She'll live just as happily in the sun as she does in the shade. And look, she'll even live in a pot with no drainage holes. What a trooper. The bonus to all this is that she's a looker too. Even with those weird looking flowers sticking out the top. I think they're flowers anyway. What do you think? Are you a fan? Let me know in the comments. The next time you see this lass in the store, consider picking her up. She's very easy going. The Aglionema tigres is probably the easiest going plant I own. I was quite late to the party with Aglionemas or Chinese evergreens as they're known to the masses, but this fella has given me nothing but joy since I bought him two years ago. And that is something I don't say lightly, believe me. Most plants give me some form of aggro at some point along the journey, but nope, not this guy. No browning, no yellowing, no throwing his dummy out of the pram, just a humble happiness to exist. We should all take a leaf out of his book, really. So he's unlucky enough to live about two meters away from the nearest window in my living room, even getting blocked out by his neighbor Mr. Philodendron Brazil, but he has taken it on the chin like a trooper. No complaining, nothing. On top of all that, he's a very handsome fella too. Just look at the tattoos on his limbs, very pretty. Even your mum and dad would be happy to accept him into the family. Now, viewers of this channel will know all about my love-hate relationship with Tradescantias. I've chucked many a trad in the bin, only to regret it, apologise, vow to do better, and plonk it back on the shelf. I do this every week. Well, there is one particular Tradescantia that I don't do all this palaver with. It's the only one that doesn't look a mess after a couple of months. Yes, the Cyanotis coensis, or the much more forgivingly named teddy bear vine. This big monster of a plant came from a tiny stem piece that I found on the floor of my local nursery. And yes, I did find it. I certainly didn't break it off. That's prop lifting and I'd never do that. Anyway, just look at him. What a specimen. It's like he's on performance enhancing drugs, he's so big and muscular. And this guy is just so rapid. He's the Usain Bolt of the plant world. I took that one stem piece, propagated it, and three months later I had a big bushy plant on my hands. And do you know the thing I love most about it? It doesn't have that annoying trait of losing its leaves near the base of the stems like all its petulant cousins. I've no idea why, but I'll take it. So if you've been watching my videos and have been put off Tradescantias for life, firstly I'm sorry and secondly, check this bad boy out, he's actually pretty good. I've actually only had this next plant for about five months, but in that time, he's been one of the most well-behaved students in the classroom. He always does his homework. He always puts his hand up to speak and never joins in when his classmates mocks his teacher. Very polite. This is a golem jade, of course, and he's probably even more easygoing than his more popular cousin, the classic jade or Crushula avata. You can see where it gets its name from, can't you? He's a bit of a weird-looking creature, but I think that's why I've got a bit of a soft spot for 
for him. That and the fact he gives me next to no trouble. I actually bought his brother at the same time and kept him in the garden to get rained on all spring and summer, and believe me it has, and look, he's loving life. These guys are super resistant to underwatering and can clearly handle a season of overindulgence, so a perfect fit for even the newbiest of beginners. If only all my students were like that. I'm looking at you, spider plant. What's this? A calafaya on a list of easygoing plants? You've clearly lost your marbles, or even worse, trying to cash in on people's love of calafayas. I've been rumbled. No, seriously, of all the calafayas in the land, this one is the least nightmarish of them all. Sure, it gets the odd browning on the very ends of the leaves, but the important thing is it doesn't get on the fast train to Uglyville within only a month. No calafaya is perfect. If you expect this, then you're in for a very rude awakening. You're probably looking at yours, feeling proud, thinking, hmm, mine is looking perfect, but I bet you've not had it for at least a year. Either that, or you literally live in the jungle. If you're living in reality though, and currently looking at your mess of a plant, thinking never again, then I urge you to try just once more with a Calafair Elgograss. Mine has been through the ringer, and it still looks like it loves me, don't you? Just look at his lot in life. He lives in a porcelain pot without drainage that is three meters from the nearest window that faces northwest in a particularly gloomy climate that I moan about far too much in my videos. All that and he's fine. And to prove my point, I've even got two younger specimens and they're as happy as Larry too. Hands down, the most popular plant in the world has to be the Monstera deliciosa. Folks go absolutely mad for this plant. Give it some variegation and people lose their minds. I've not been sucked into remortgaging my house for an elbow just yet. I'm plenty happy enough with the standard green ones. Luckily for me, and for the viewers of this channel of course, you won't hear me whinge about how fussy it is. Because it's not. Sure, it gets the odd yellow leaf here or there, but on the whole it's pretty well behaved. By the way, I've got a video about diagnosing Monstera yellow leaves that I'll leave a link to in the corner right now. It's also something I cover in my online houseplant SOS course that you can check out through the QR code on the screen now or link in the description. I cover this and many of the common problems folks face with their needy friends. Plants that is, not people. If you want a plant to take over your home without so much of an invite, then look no further than the Hoya Lisa. Seriously, this thing is invasive, it's so happy with its lot in life. I plonked it untamed next to my window one day, and the next, it completely taken over that corner of the room, invading the devil's ivy that's on the shelf next to it. I'm actually really not sure if it's going to strangle the ivy or not. Should I take it off or do you think it's fine? Let me know down below. The point is, I really don't do anything to it and it's turned into a monster. It's a bit hidden from view, so I often forget about it. But look at it, it must thrive on neglect. If you're up to the challenge of taming the beast, then it's a beautiful plant with lovely variegation and pretty flowers that it shows near the end of summer. If you saw my recent video about easy care plants that are actually a nightmare, then you'll remember that the ficus elastica unwittingly found itself on there. Yeah, start growing stems properly when I cut you, and maybe I'll consider taking you off the naughty list. Now, if you want a ficus that doesn't turn itself inside out and into knots, then check out its easygoing cousin, Benjamina. Ben is happy with his lot in life. As long as he's got food in his belly, a license for his tally, then nothing's gonna bring him down. Sorry, sorry, I can't help getting songs into my videos. Slap it in the comments if you know what that one is. What I'm taking an age to say is that all he wants is a nice bright spot in your home, a drink of water every now and then, and some food in his belly. Do that and you'll have no problems. I didn't do this, you see, and he downed tools for me. He wasn't in bright light and he kept dropping his leaves. I moved him and voila, happy chappy. Now, the Oxalis triangularis is not an easy plant. No way, not on my watch. So why are you talking about it then, dummy? Well, because of its ability to resurrect itself like the second coming of Jesus Christ. Seriously, you can absolutely have a dog of a plant in your home, but all you do is let it die fully over winter, get the bulbs out in spring, replant them, and hey presto, you've got a brand new plant to repeat the cycle all over again. 
but why would you do this? Sounds like misery. Because for those first couple of months, this gal is absolutely stunning, especially with those gorgeous purpley flowers. The only problem is that it just can't sustain itself. Not inside anyway, not in my climate. And when I say let it die fully over winter, I mean it. Put her somewhere dark and cold and forget she exists. Don't even look at her. She'll look a complete mess come spring, but all will be forgotten when you replant the bulbs and give them some water and light. Ah, the lipstick plant. The most phallic of looking plants you can have in your home. Am I right or am I right? This plant always amuses me when I see the little flower bulbs poking out of their um, skin, ready to show themselves to the world. I know, I know, extremely childish, but it's the little things that make life worth living. Luckily for us, this gal is surprisingly easy to have on our side. Look at mine, it's been flowering all summer long. How did I do this? Well, it's pretty easy, really. All you've got to do is give it the things it wants, and it'll love you back and show you for its little lipsticks. Sounds easy, but it includes things like bright light, the right watering and most importantly the correct pruning. Not convinced? Then check out the video on the screen now where I tell you exactly how to do this. And subscribe if you want more, it's free.